So he said, it's like a butterfly going from point A to point B, who looks like he doesn't have the slightest idea where he's going. And he said, that's the way I feel sometimes when I'm praying. But he said, you just need to know that when you're allowing the Holy Spirit to take hold with you, he's going to take those prayers and what seems like a chance to you is being led by Holy Spirit. He's going to land on the right person, the right place, in the right way because he knows what is necessary and right. He knows what's working in their heart. He knows what the enemy is using to bind them up. He knows what's going on in the hidden offices of Washington, D.C. And if you just let him pray through you, he'll hover. He'll also light upon One of the <clears throat> most amazing testimonies of this I've ever heard was given by Norval Hayes years ago. Norval was a crazy, wild, <laughs> radical, charismatic businessman slash teacher, full of faith and mentored by not Hagen and the guys he ran with some, mentored by Lester Sumrall. who was also wild. I mean, good wild. But Norval told a story of ministering in Canada. And he was in a, said, I was doing sort of a tour, driving across Canada and stopping in several churches to speak. And I got, he was just a businessman. Norval he had like five businesses, Filled with the spirit, started running around, supporting himself while he was doing it from his businesses, running around with Summerall, who kind of mentored him. And next thing you know, he'd being asked to speak in all the full gospel businessmen circle. And he became really uh, used a lot in that. So, but never, he always maintained his businesses, and he always called himself a businessman, not a preacher. But he would speak and teach, and God really used him, especially in deliverance. But he's up in Canada, and he'd never been there before, and these people didn't really know him, and he didn't know them. He just started his message, and he said, I heard Holy Spirit say, stop, stop your message and pray in the Spirit. So, you know, it was a little awkward because he didn't really know these people. Now, he's up now to speak. But he said, it was so strong, I knew it was God. So he said, you have to excuse me for a minute. God's told me to stop speaking and pray in, pray in tongues, pray in, my, pray in the Spirit. So he said, I just started, you know, in, in the microphone, I think, because they could hear him, because you'll know that in a minute. So he's just, Now he doesn't know what he's doing. He doesn't know what's necessary. You're right. You got a real weakness. So he said, I, you know, I just, so, and just pray in the spirit. I mean, and they said a minute or two goes by, and I don't know, still don't know what I'm doing. And the people don't know what I'm doing. And he said, I'm walking back and forth on the stage doing this, and the people are sitting out there, and they're just kind of going. <laughs> Who is this crazy man? What's he doing? I mean, I've been in churches where it wouldn't be a big deal. Probably wouldn't be a big deal. Here, you just start, you just join in and say, well, okay, I'll pray in tongues with you. <laughs> But not so there. 
So I said, five minutes go by. I don't know what I'm doing. They're just watching. Ten minutes go by. Praying in tongues. All the people just watching him. I mean, after 10 or 12, 13, 14, 15 minutes, I'm probably up there thinking, Lord, it's pretty much time for you to do something now. Okay. <laughs> Or looking for that button on the podium that some of us will look for where you push a button and the floor opens up and you just <laughs> sneak out and I'll see you. No. Because I, I feel, it, it, if, if, if that's me, that 15 minutes probably felt like an hour or two. Because he had no idea what he's doing, what it was about. He's just, paga. He said, after 15 minutes, a lady in the back started shouting, screaming, jumped up out of her seat and ran to the front. And of course he says, what's, what's, what's going on? She said, well, my, husband, or my daughter is a missionary in Africa. And she's so far back in the interior that it takes three days for her to get there. Go a little ways by vehicle, then boat, and have to walk and camp. And <clears throat> said, that we just received a telegram a few days ago from the people she works with, the ministry. Said, We're sorry to tell you your daughter's con contracted a fatal disease, which runs its course very quickly. There's no hope. There's nothing we can do. We don't know if we can get her body to you. If we can, we will. If not, she'll have to be buried here. We're so sorry to tell you this. But the last time she was home for a few weeks, she taught me some of the dialect of the people she was working with, she worked with. He said, I just heard you say over and over, you can rejoice your daughter's healed. You can rejoice. You can rejoice. Your daughter's healed. You can rejoice. Your daughter's healed. And she was healed. Confirmed. You say, well, well, it took, that's a long way to Africa. When you don't know how to pray as you ought, what is binding, what is needed, what is right, what has to happen. Let me help. Let me take hold with you. I know how to do this. That's Holy Spirit talking. I know how to do this. 